Wow. A lot has changed since the early 2000s, except for my shirt and teacup choice. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm doing another X-Men review. I've basically just done three in a row here, and this is the third one. The original X-Men film, wow. If you haven't seen it in a while, watch it. It's really interesting to go back over 15 years. 15 years, am I correct? If you wanted to know the film that really started comic book movies in our generation off, it's X-Men, because before we had Superman, and that just could never escape its 70s, 80s campiness. And then, sure, there was Batman. Batman had its own idea, but the problem was it was Tim Burton-y, and as dark as Batman Forever was, it still was cheesy, and then we got Joel Schumacher who ruined it all. So really comic book movies were a dead end, except with X-Men. Brian Singer brought a vision of these characters together, and it's probably the one thing that boosted Marvel up. It's basically gave Marvel the idea, uh, the inkling, of that it could be a studio. Of course, it's not with these characters, but either way, X-Men is a pinnacle in comic book movie history because of how good that movie is, despite the fact that it's barely over an hour and a half long. It's the shortest film out of all the X-Men movies in my, I think, it may tie with Wolverine Origins, but it's still, the amount of character development, the amount of story, and the amount of tension that they put into that film is fantastic. One of my favorite scenes, again with Magneto, is when he comes out of the train station and then all the cops look at him, they, then he turns their guns on him and he shoots and he fires that bullet and he stops it at the guy's head. Now, this is going to sound really stupid, but when I watched this when I was a kid, I thought that Tr Professor Xavier was stopping the bullet. Um, and only t it took me many years later before I realized, like, oh wait, he can get into people's minds, but he's not a telekinetic. Either way, I still love that scene. The end fight between Magneto, Wolverine, and Rogue on top of the Statue of Liberty is so well done with the music, the visuals, so cool. Ian McKellen is so awesome as this character. And what's really interesting too is if you watch the first movie and then you watch the beginning of First Class, you'll see that Matthew Vaughn basically did everything movement for movement, frame for frame of Xavier's uh, discovery of his powers at the Nazi death camp. So I thought that was actually pretty interesting too, to watch that back and forth. The action's fantastic. The idea of Rogue being a character was really cool. Unfortunately, they really couldn't do much work with her. Maybe they had something better in the third one until Brett Ratner ruined it. But either way, I still think that this film stands on its own. It's still one of the best films, mainly because of what it was. Sure, it's a little dated here and there. Sure, some of the fight scenes, especially like, you know, as cool as it is with Wolverine going around one of the horns of Statue of Liberty, that scene still makes no sense physics-wise. However, and, uh, oh, it's the Cyclops a bitch in this movie. I don't know. I didn't like Cyclops, but I thought Wolverine was really cool. I thought Xavier was cool. One thing that I liked, which is what I thought, this is why I don't like Jennifer Lawrence's version of Mystique, is that in the originals, the first three movies, she had a kind of a weird voice, like a frog-like voice, like multiple voices when she talked. And I liked that about her, kind of made her more lizard-like almost, even though she wasn't. In Jennifer Lawrence's version, she's fine, she sounds exactly like she was, which pissed me off. But I still, I think that her fight with Wolverine is still super cool on the bottom of the Statue of Liberty. Either way, the X-Men film, admittedly, it's gotten a little dated, not with its effects. I think the effects still stand up, but in terms of grandeur and how the films go, and then also this whole sort of situation with Senator Kelly, is it's a cool idea, but it doesn't really manifest into as much as you would like. Also, Halle Berry's trying to do that accent, those accents so bad. But either way, I still think this film is one of the better, it's definitely one of the more pinnacle films in the X-Men series. So I'm going to give X-Men, the first film, a 5 out of 7. If you guys haven't seen it in a while, watch it. It's really interesting seeing this film that I saw when I was 12 years old. And just seeing, I have not seen it in so long. 
to imagine a film that's that old. It's, it's older now. It's more time has passed since I saw it as a kid than I was before I when I was born until the movie came out. So that's just kind of like what I how I feel when I watch the Lords of the Rings movies. Anyway guys, that's the third review in the X-Men movies. X-Men 2, which is still the best one, is coming up next and I will have a different shirt for that one. Anyway guys, that's all from me. I hope you guys are enjoying these X-Men reviews. I'll see you guys later.